Please welcome Jürgen Schmidhuber. Three prisoners were sentenced to death, one of them French, one of them German, one of them American. What is your last wish? They ask the French guy. He says, one exquisite bottle of exquisite French wine. What is your last wish? They ask the German guy. He says, I want to give a speech. <laughs> What is your last wish? They ask the American guy. He says, I want to get shot before the German starts his speech. <laughs> Unfortunately for you guys, it is too late now. <laughs> this is my name. This is how to pronounce my name. I'm affiliated with the ITSIA, the Swiss AI lab in Lugano, and I also have a group at the Technische Universität München. All my slides are designed according to recursive applications of the harmonic proportion, the um, golden ratio, and th that, makes, that makes them very compressible and therefore has a lot to do with my talk because it's all about compression and compression progress. Any understanding of intelligence would be incomplete without an understanding of uh, things such as art and uh, science and music and humor. I will show that there's a very simple algorithmic principle that can explain these things. It's so simple that it fits on a single slide. Let's define the simplicity or the subjective um, compressibility or the subjective beauty of some data point X given some subjective observer O at a given point in his life, T. And that is just the number of bits you need to encode the incoming data, the X, at this point in time with the given limited compression algorithm that you have. For example, a face that is very regular doesn't need a lot of bits to be encoded. I tried to come up with a very simple geometric description of human faces. This face, of course, is interesting only as long as the symmetries, etc., are not yet known, but then it becomes boring. The important thing is not the compression by itself, but the first derivative of the compressibility, because what's really going on is that as new data is coming in, your compression algorithm improves all the time and becomes a better predictor of the data. Whatever you can predict, you can compress because you don't have to store extra what you can predict. And to the extent that your learning algorithm is improving the predictor, such that it becomes a better predictor on the observed data so far, you are saving bits. That's an internal reward signal, an intrinsic motivation, an, an internal joy signal, and that's why you want to maximize it for the future. You want your controller that is directing your arms and your, uh, your actuators to move such that you get additional data from the environment where your particular compression algorithm still can make this type of progress. And there are many reward maximizing algorithms and reinforcement learning algorithms that in principle can do this. Make new data, more data, which is compressible in previously unknown ways. But discovery in physics, for example, is just a very large uh, compression improvement. Columbus did not become famous because he was the, the first to uh, discover America, but because he was the last to discover America. <laughs> Scientists and the artists have something in common. They always try to make new data which is compressible in a new, previously unknown way. A new pattern, a novel pattern means, yes, it's compressible, but in a way that I didn't know yet, such that my compressor can make this um, learning progress and can save a couple of bits. You know, before I uh, came here, I thought uh, this is going to be just another Singularity Summit and probably there won't be much of an audience, but you are actually a large audience by my standards. <laughs> the other day I gave a talk and there was just a single person in the audience. <laughs> a young lady. I said, young lady, it's very embarrassing. But apparently today I'm going to give this talk just for you. And she, and she said, okay. 
But please hurry, um, I gotta clean up here. <laughs> we had a whole bunch of different implementations of the principle that I just explained. We didn't start that yesterday. In 1990, uh, the first systems of this type were implemented using very simple prediction machines artificial neural networks. Recently, uh, two guys in California, they took the 1995 model and found that it explains eye movements of humans better than previous models. Let me give you another example of uh, very compactly encoding images. Let me start with a bunch of large circles. We add four times as many circles with half the size. We add uh, 16 times as many circles with one-fourth the size, and so on. And now the rule is I can create new drawings, but only by using arcs that are on these legal circles. I can encode drawings by enumerating all the circles, for example, giving each of them a little number. The large ones get small numbers, the small ones get larger and larger numbers. And then you can uh, very compactly encode drawings like this one. Here I'm removing all the green circles, which I'm not using, and leave only the red circles, which are the only ones that I need to specify the details of the drawing. And finally, I get um, a very simple a drawing that can be encoded by very few bits of information, just a few lines of code, much more compressible than, for example, a JPEG encoding of the same image or a GIF encoding. And that would be then an example of low complexity art. Here we see a, a self similar femme fractale. Uh, femme fractale. I'm removing all the circles that I'm not using, and then only the green circles are left, which are the only ones that I need to specify the details of, these, uh, of this drawing. And then finally, uh, we have again a, an image, a low complexity artwork that is, can be encoded by very, very few bits of information. We see a little robot which has learned to balance a pole. Maybe you see that it has three wheels. It's controlled by, again, a recurrent neural network. But now there's no teacher that tells the robot what to do. In the beginning, the pole always fell down. But then after some time, it maximized trial length and became better and better. But then it was starting to run against the wall all the time. And finally, it learned to use its sensors without a teacher. Down here, we see the same robot, but now with uh, two poles on top of each other. So now. Here there's a joint in between, and this robot, after 4,000 iterations, trials, has learned to, to balance another pole on top of the first one. Here you see that. We are currently uh, implementing, uh, in a more complex system, these principles on a humanoid like this. You can use an old trick of Kurt Gödel, who in 1931 founded the theoretical computer science, used the integers as a universal programming language to create formulas that talk about themselves, that are self-referential, and they say things such as, I am not provable by a computational theorem proving procedure. And in this way, he showed that math is either fundamentally flawed or contains statements that are true but not provable. And he was an Austrian. He did this work in Vienna, but later, later he, he came to the United States just like another great Austrian thinker who then became uh, uh, governor of California. <laughs> and we can use the self-reference trick of Gödel to build an optimal universal problem solver, which is totally self-referential in the sense that it can inspect any of its code and can rewrite any of its code provided that it first can show through a proof that the rewrite is good according to some user-defined utility function, which can be anything. Any problem can be written if it is well-defined as a, as a utility function. This is a rather novel application of Gödel's self-reference trick, which can be used to build a universal problem solver, which is theoretically optimal in a certain sense. Here, I just want to point out that uh, we are currently entering through results like that into a phase where AI, artificial intelligence, is not any longer just a collection of heuristics, but it is becoming a real formal science. And that's good because heuristics come and go, but theorems are for eternity. Think about that. Thank you very much for your attention.